I'm a super fan, but I'm going to give a really basic answer. Tony, man. Everyone, I think, thinks I'm going to respond Boston Rob. I'm not. Boston Rob's up there for me. Tony Vlachos, or Tony V. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but he played so differently and just set the pace the whole time. His uh, confessionals were hilarious. His, like, challengers, he did, I mean, he didn't win any, I don't think, that season, but he played hard, and he was also spy bunkers and listening in and spy shacks and, like, luring people in uh, with his tactics, and I think that right there set the pace for me to really want to get in this game and try new things because it showed me that you can be yourself, you can have fun, you can be ferocious and also have a good time at the same time, but Tony would be the number one for sure. I was first inspired by Sheree because, I mean, she's amazing. Even though she didn't win, she's just amazing. And I guess I just spoke to me, get off the couch, let's try something, let's do it. That was my motivation. However, the last season that I just watched, first time I saw Jesse, I loved him immediately in the beginning of the season. I put money on him. He didn't win for me, but still, I felt like he stayed focused. I'd play against him, but like, I think he's like, he's he's pretty amazing. Come on, it has to be Team TV, right? Tony, big Tony fan. My friends always tell me when I was growing up, my family too, like, you know, your life is not reality TV. You don't have to treat every moment like that, you know? Uh, Tony, I think is just that uh, perfect balance of, you know, being really strategic and making really great personal relationships, but also making a great show and finding moments to have fun in the process and reminding people that this is a fun experience. Uh, he's by far my favorite player. And, you know, uh, they, they, they told me once, you know, you kind of remind us of Tony in the casting process. Like, don't say that. You, you have to earn that, you know? Like that guy is the GOAT and, uh, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. Coach, easily. Coach Wade the Dragon Slayer. He is just hilarious. Comedy gold. Okay, Carolyn is making a, a real case for herself, but obviously I was only able to see a few of those episodes. But if she continues going, like, she she might take Coach's spot. But it's between them. Coach just wins out because I've seen more of him. But so funny. I would love to beat him. I've been in his DMs for years now just saying, like, I, I love you. Just please respond to me. So maybe now I'll, I'll be able to get a response. The first one that comes to mind for me is Todd Herzog, Survivor China. Watching him play came in a very pivotal point in my life when I was going to school at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, not knowing who I am, what I wanted to do, the space I took up in the world, who I wanted to be, right? And watching him play authentic to who he is as an openly gay man, confident, that was everything that I wanted to be, and then win. And so I really admired Todd as a person and also his gameplay. He was able to go out there and make connections with people. And then when he didn't need them because they didn't serve his gameplay anymore, he tossed him out. And so I feel like he played a cutthroat game. I feel like he was genuine to who he is. And so I just really vibed with that. And so I would say Todd is my favorite Survivor player. I've developed this really strong affinity towards cast because I did go through the Survivor process and you know, took my personality test. And I was told, hey, you know, your results are really similar to Cass's. And I thought, oh, you mean Cassidy, right? It's from, from the most recent season at that time. And um, they're, they're like, no, no, Cass, you know, like chaos, Cass. And at first I was taken aback, but now I realize that's such a massive compliment. Um, I love the way that Cass played her game because she was really direct. She took no, b you know, she wasn't afraid to just be herself. I think we're different because I feel like I have less to prove than Cass does. So I'm kind of out here to have the experience just to be myself, um, you know, not trying to teach anybody that I am something or I'm not something, but um, her personality, um, her I say aggression in the most uh, kind way possible, like just forthrightness. I mean, those are the aspects that I think uh, Cass and I have a lot in common. And I watched those seasons back and how could anybody watch that and think Cass is the villain? She's obviously the hero. This has been a take long before the White Lotus had started, but after my rewatch, Mike White is my favorite Survivor player of all time. Mike White balances the two things that I love about Survivor, which is fantastic storytelling. He's one of the best confessional givers ever to be on the show, which is very natural because he's a writer. He knows what he's doing. And also his social game. He was in the David Goliath camps. He stayed rather because he was so funny. He was a good guy to be around, to have around. And that's what people cited at the final tribal council is he was just a light in the camp. And that's, you know, I don't have, and not to say Mike White doesn't have a ton of other marketable skills. I'm sure he does. I don't have a ton of other stuff that I'm bringing to the table here. I don't have a lot of survival skills. There's some really muscular guys here you know i tried to lift before i came here it didn't go particularly well so i'm seeing it just being fun and being funny and being somebody that people like to chat with i'm, I'm hoping that takes me 
through this thing. Parvati, she's everything. She's my idol. Parvati is the name of a powerful Hindu goddess. So that is Parvati's namesake. I am a super proud Hindu. This is a rakshay that I will wear into the game. It's a symbol of my Hindu identity. And I actually myself am also named after a really powerful Hindu goddess. So I, I ever since I, I discovered Parvati on Survivor, I was like, yes, 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 I resonate with you. She's amazing. I, I love how she wields people's perception of her to her advantage. She can come across as this like really bubbly, happy-go-lucky woman, which I think some people put hand in hand with not a threat, which I think is silly because obviously, as we know, Par Parvati was able to read other other people's read on her and then use that to her advantage and show later in the game how much of a strategic mastermind she truly is. So she's kind of, she's it for me. And then the obligatory, I, I love Natalie. I watched Natalie play growing up. I'm obsessed with her and what she means for brown women everywhere, you know? <laughs> Sari Fields. She didn't really try to change too much about herself for the game. It was kind of just like, every ball that was pitched to her, she tried her best to hit it, you know? And it wasn't like she's out here scurrying for idols. It's not like she's out here trying to be a challenge beast, but she's been to the end multiple times. And even one of the times that she got voted out, it was like a survivor historic moment, you know, like, oh, well, there's nobody else kind of thing. And I really felt like that would have been her year that she should have won. She was playing a great game and it was so under the radar. I'm a fan in real life, so I follow her on, you know, social media and I see that she's, you know, in the medical field and, you know, a great mom and stuff like that. So it just creates this sense of normalcy to a survival idol that I really, really appreciate. I freaking love Tony. The fact that he got by with not a single vote, that's like number one you get out. I just love how he was able to kind of like change his attitude. Um, I'm also a big fan of Natalie um, from Blood vs. Water and Winners at War. That girl, like, I hope I can channel her determination. I just see her as an absolute rock star, absolute warrior. Loved how she was, like, in Blood vs. Water, like, sacrificing her own rewards to, like, you know, make alliances. Like, those are things that I would do. And I just really, I hope I play a game like her. And then I also love Cody from this past season, season 43. I think he's just hysterical and was just great to watch. Great fun. <laughs> I got to rock the bald headed brother, Jeremy Collins. The way he plays the game, the up close and you know in your face kind of stuff, but not in your face to be aggressive, in your face to be like, oh, let me know what's going on, bro. Like, talk to me. Like, I'm, that's how I am every single day. That's what I do. And you know, if someone's watching for the first time and they see a season that Jeremy was on and they see, you know, this season with me on it, they're going to be like, are they related? Are they? Because I can really honestly say that, you know, I can, he's, he's a top of the list for me. Culpepper's such an off-the-wall pick, but I like his confidence. Andrew Savage is the same kind of way. But in terms of someone who's a little close to the home in terms of who I am, I'm a big Jonathan Penner fan. I think that he brings a level of authenticity, a level of storytelling that is, you know, basically unrivaled in the uh, Survivor history. And he's been so, you know, forthright with, you know, who he is and how he feels and things he's gone through that I have a tremendous amount of my admiration for him. So he would be, he would be probably the more kind of uh, representative uh, favorite player. I would say Boston Rob. He knows how to understand people and what drives them. And I think that that, that has gotten him, like, obviously the win and far in, in games. He's a master, like, I don't want to say manipulator, maybe like a master persuader. He just knows how to, if I know what drives you, I know how to get into your head. And I think to me, this is more of a social game than anything else. Like we've seen it multiple times where people suck in physical challenges and they get to the end. And it's because like they understood people and, and what drives them and what makes them tick. And I don't know, that just excites me. And, and I like Boston Rob, like he seems like such a cool dude. Like obviously we love the Boston Rob and Amber story and like they had their, their girls, but yeah, I just I just love the story. They're 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 the reason Survivor is Survivor. My favorite Survivor player ever changes all the time. But right now it's Yao Man. I actually went back recently and watched Fiji for the first time because you know I'm 22 years old, so uh, I didn't start watching Survivor until it was like you know already season 21. I think Yao Man is one of my favorite players because he is you know super strategic but also super friendly and innovative. And when it th comes down to things like you know creating the first fake idol or uh, giving away a truck. Hopefully I won't be giving away any trucks uh, this season. Favorite player ever in life, Boston Rob with the caveat of his earlier seasons only. 
nothing recent. Definitely not Boston Robin winners at war. I think those first two seasons that he played, I feel like he was just, well, he was far so sexy. I mean, literally, that was one of the reasons I went, when I was like watching Survivor, I was like, what's the early season Boston Rob played in? And I literally went back to season four just to watch young Boston Rob because I was like, okay, he's this is beautiful to see. His leadership style, obviously it was a little like cult-like and like unhealthy, but he did it in a way where people didn't realize they were being led to slaughter until they were already there. And, you know, I kind of like that idea of just like slowly coaxing people where they just feel like they want to follow you. They just feel like they just need to follow you. And then, you know, you do you know, execute how you ever you need to. Um, and I think later in Winners at War, I think he tried to do that and it just he did it too rough and too aggressively. And so it's like, mm, that's why I have to add the caveat. Harvey, you know, I think she really opened the door for women to play a more cutthroat game and she took a lot of heat for it, I think, at the time. And so I really respect her. And I think she demonstrates an ability for a woman to be, you know, like charming and use her like feminine wiles and, and, and like just general social abilities, but also be aggressive and ruthless. And I think sometimes people pigeonhole people, whether you're a man or a woman, into one of those two categories. And I really like that she sort of threaded the needle there. And then that's something that I would look to do as well. Okay, my two favorites, can I say two? Aubrey Bracco and Kelly Wentworth. For different reasons, obviously they're different players. Aubrey, I just, I relate to her. She just, I just relate to her. She's quirky, she's kind of weird. And that anxiety that you see so viscerally come through on the show, I'm like, I, I get that. And then Kelly is just bold and brave and like doesn't give a about anything, but is also really strategic and I just think she's amazing. I think they're both just amazing, like humans and players, and I would love to play with them. But then I wouldn't want to vote them out. So maybe I don't want to play. <laughs> I'm a super fan, but I'm going to give a really basic answer. Tony, man. Everyone, I think, thinks I'm going to respond Boston Rob. I'm not. Boston Rob's up there for me. Definitely, definitely top three. But definitely Tony, man. There's no one who has been more entertaining to watch and more creative with this strategy as they enter the game. The way he is able to cut people's throats and then come back and be like, no, 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 this was good. This was good for us. It was not good for them, but he could just convince them. And I just thought he was the best, man. Like Trish and Sarah are strong willed people. Like he was able, like in Kageyan and when is it war? I know Sarah's in Kageyan too, but he cut both of them and they both come back and are like, all right, Tony, what do you want to do? Who has that capability? No one else who has played that game has the capability to do that as effectively and efficiently as Tony does. There's no strong argument against Tony being the most entertaining and the best strategic combination. 